Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. It means it's time for an another live stream. Today is Friday, Friday, Friday. We've made it to the end of the week, August, uh, let's say 18. Oh, I was right. August 18th, 2023. Guys, we are at the end of summer, at least uh, kind of schedule-wise, life place-wise. It's still going to be hot for a long time in a lot of places in the United States. But for now, um, it kind of feels like the end of summer because fall stuff is starting. Uh, yeah. I had to drop off some school forms for my kids today. And uh, a lot of people's kids. I'm seeing first day of school pics from a lot of my friends on social media. And I'm getting older. So I'm also seeing like um, there's a variety of emotions that go with them. But pictures of uh, my friends, people that are my contemporaries, dropping off their kids for their first day of college which is a very strange thing to think about. Uh, and then some of like uh, my uh, my sister-in-law, like she dropped off her kid to college. And now I guess technically that makes her an empty nester. Although her oldest lives at home again, but technically I guess she's like an empty nester, you know? So that's kind of weird. It makes me feel <laughs> very old. It's very surprising. I don't know how this happened. I remember it was weird to think that my friends were getting married. And then it was weird to think that my friends were having kids. And now some of those children um, are in college and can like drive and stuff. So it's a strange thing. Time is weird. This whole thing is a simulation and none of it makes sense anymore. So uh, yeah, today we got a really great podcast <laughs> playing for you guys. On that note, um, we got some fun stuff coming up. Uh, I'm looking forward to next week where I'm going to be heading out to Budapest. World Championships action is starting. Does it start today? I'm not even sure. Um, World Championship meet is happening. A lot of athletes are over in Budapest. Now, I won't be heading over until Wednesday. I won't be arriving till Thursday night. Um, but uh, I'll be there just in time for the World Championships marathon. So I'm really, really excited for that. Uh, and today's uh, unboxing or unbagging, should I say, is going to be related to that because I got a package from Kraft. So I'm going to be going from Budapest for World Championships to Chamonix for UTMB. And I'm thinking there's some UTMB related goodies in this bag, but I don't know what's in there yet. So we'll have to see. Before we get into it, though, let's say hi to everyone listening on the podcast on audio only version. Hope you guys are having a good run out there today. As much as I did mention that it was hot here in uh, Crystal Lake, it was uh, 55 degrees when I woke up this morning. Beautiful weather for running. And I did get to run in the SC Trainer version, too very pleasantly surprised uh that i'm enjoying that shoe so much so yeah hopefully you guys are having a pleasant surprise on your on your run today whether it's a new shoe or good weather hope you're having a good one and for those of you watching this on youtube later but not live welcome to the number one uh running live stream where you can have your running shoe questions answered in real time Although, I guess if you're watching this later but not live, you're not getting your running shoe questions answered in real time. But other people are. Like, on that note, uh, we got a couple, of a lot of questions about the SC Trainer 2 already. Duke BB coming in early in the chat saying, running shoe question of the day. <laughs> he says, New Balance SC Trainer version 1 or version 2, disregarding the price at the current time. Well, that does make things a lot easier because it's last year's shoe for this shoe. This year's shoe and prices can change, and that always affects the analysis. But head to head for the shoes, so far, I've only done one run in the version two. But so far, I'm going to overall say I'm leaning towards version two. Version one was kind of like out there, it was super squishy, very tall in the back, uh, a knit upper, a lot of things. I, I like shoes that are kind of like a little bit extra, you know? Uh, and that def shoe definitely falls into that category. But it was also kind of like a weird shoe because it didn't feel like, it didn't always feel like a max cushion shoe. It didn't always feel like the shoe that I thought it could be given some of the paper stats. Um, but it was a, it was quirky and I liked it. Version two is less quirky, but I think it's better. I had a really great 10 mile run today. Easy run with some strides in there. So, um, not a lot of pace changes. I'll, I might bring it out for a fart like in a couple days before I head out to Budapest. Um, but right now, I'm, lean, I'm leaning toward. I didn't think I was going to say this, but I'm leaning towards version two. All right. Um, Eliza says, I go fam. Hope everyone is well. Taped up. Duffel, duffel. Suspicious. Yeah. So I actually think it came a couple of days 
earlier than when I picked it up, but I think it confused the people at the PO box place because it came, it's a giant bag. Oh, it's very heavy too. And it came like taped up like this. It wasn't in a box. This is just how it shipped, which makes sense. It's a bag that's supposed to be used for travel. So, uh, that's fine, but it's all taped up. I think just to make sure nothing, you know, got taken out of it because there's stuff inside. So we'll have to see what it is. Let's get to a couple more people from the chat first, though. Uh, let's put this up. There we go. Right there. Uh, Daniel Bauer says, yo, it's 105 plus every day in Austin. So I've made good friends with my assault runner this summer. Well, yeah, that's that's it's so wild to me how hot it's been in. I mean, Yes, the South is hot. I know Austin's not the South, but places south of the Mason Dixon are hot. I, I understand that. It feels like it's been hotter for you guys than normal. It's also been colder for you guys than normal, too. You guys have been getting like snow and frost and stuff. Weather's been weird. Weather's been weird. Um, all right. Let's see what else we got here. Mm. Andrew Scott says, see, Andrew, Andrew you're, you're probably in an area near mine. He says, I just did a super easy recovery run today. It was 57 degrees and amazing. That's kind of what I had. It was, it was, I'm not trying to rub it in uh, for Daniel Flowers, but it, it, it's really nice when it's 50 something degrees for your run. I got to tell you. Uh, Wojek Malkowitz uh, did four miles of recovery run at 4.19 a.m. in the morning in the Midway area for 50, 59 degrees. There you go. See, that's nice. But it would have been dark for you then, huh? Hmm. All right. Nathan Dunham says, yo, what's going on? First one in the Metaspeed Sky today, 13.1 miles at marathon pace. That's a big run. It's just like, I can feel the magic fairy dust in the shoe. It's a, it's a nice one. It is a really nice one. You know, I was kind of, I think that there's a new, there isn't a new Metaspeed Sky yet. There are in prototypes. I think some of the pros have been racing in them. And from what I understand from talking to a lot of the athletes in Boulder last, like not this last trip, but the trip before that, I think ASICS has gone crazy. They've just been sending bunches and bunches of prototypes to their pros and letting them sort it out and tell them what's good and what's not. So there's been a lot of potential new updates coming, but so far there's not new ones, which, uh, you know, for, for someone that reviews shoes is a little bit disappointing because I like novelty, but it's still a really good shoe. I knew there, I know there's a new colorway coming out for Budapest. I think it's the red one. It's like, it kind of looks like a, uh, like, like a popsicle to me. I guess all, a lot of the colors have looked kind of popsicle like, but the red and white one, I think I don't have that one. I don't think I need it. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to be racing. And I don't think I'll be racing again until at least a marathon or half marathon. I don't think we will be racing until 2024. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll hop into something, but it does look nice. And I do not have that one. Hmm. Adam says school should not start until after labor day and should end before Memorial day. You know, I, 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 I agree with some, you know, I go back and forth on that. Um, part of me is like, um, you know, school should be long. Most schools, are running like a 180 days of school uh, schedule. And I feel like that really should be a lot higher. Um, so it should be even longer than that, I guess. But then I'm just like, my kids are going to school next week. They'll start school when I'm in Budapest, unfortunately for me. Um, and I'm just like, man, that's so early. That's so early. And then this year they ended like the day after, like the Tuesday, like the, they had to come back after Memorial Day for like one or two days of school. And I was like, hmm, this is a good time to be at new school. Still feels kind of early. In New Jersey, we would go until like the second week of June, third week of June, depending on how much snow we had. But we wouldn't start until after Labor Day. But it kind of makes sense. Labor and Memorial Day, kind of like the beginning of the summer. I kind of like that. I wonder how many days that would translate to on a school schedule, though. Terrence, who is here? What's going on, Terrence? He says, my first live stream this week. Hello, all. Yeah, well, good to see you. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, we're going to go into a long break after, not after today. We'll have live streams Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, we won't have a live stream, and that'll and that'll be it until, like, beginning of September, because I'm going to be in Budapest and then, uh, and then in the Alps. So I'll be gone for a little bit. So I don't, I don't think that I'll be able to do a live stream from over there. I mean, maybe, maybe we'll try one, but let's plan on not. So it's going to be a long break. We got two more, two more days. That's it. Um, all right, let's go down a little bit further. 
Nathan Durham says they could have used the Adidas box for the craft bag. Actually, that Adidas box, as big as it was, would not fit this craft bag. And it's it's nice that they sent this. I, I nor I mean, now that I live in the suburbs and I have space for things like luggage and bags, I do appreciate that they sent me a bag. If this was like a couple of years ago, I would have been super annoyed about this because then I'm like, where am I going to put this later? Now I have place to put these things. And I appreciate the extra large size of this kind of, it's a roller duffel. So I like that. Uh, I did order myself a bigger bag for this trip. Cause I was like, I'm gonna be gone for like 10, 11 days. And I need to have two different brands worth of clothes in two completely different types of scenarios. So I'm like, this is going to be a lot. So I think this is going to be a good size. I think I'll be able to fit everything in there. Mm. CD76 says, are, are, am I going to have burritos at the World Championships? You know, I, I've been messaging with um, some people that have been like, oh, Budapest is a really fun city. I'm like, oh, for real then? Well, then let me know. What should I eat while I'm over there? So I have like a list of things that I'm going to try to make sure I eat while I'm over there. I'm, I don't think I'm racing at all when I'm over there either. I have to double check to see if there's a 10K event that weekend. I'm not, I haven't heard anything of updates about it, but I, so I'm not sure anymore. But, um, but yeah, so like, and I'm, and I'm not training for say Berlin or whatever. So, and I, and I'm leaning towards for Chicago that I'm, I don't think I'm going to run Chicago. So, you know, I might have, I don't know, do they do Donner kebabs in, in Budapest? Like what's the late night food? What's the late night food situation? That's what I really want to know. Not that I'm going to be out late. Let's be honest, but you know, Hmm. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Should we get to the bag? I mean, we've been talking about the bag. All right. Let's get to it. Uh, all right. Got a big bag. I got to make some room here. Hold on, guys, because this is a big bag. And you know what? My knife is all the way on that other table over there, too. Let's see if I can get it open anyway. This is a very heavy, giant roller duffel from Kraft. I don't know what the size is on this thing, but it's enormous. Um, Let's see if I can get this opened up. It's taped up because they shipped it. And I'm guessing they didn't want anyone trying to steal anything from inside. But it doesn't look like I'm going to need my knife. But, you know, maybe I should have kind of pre-opened this a little bit for the sake of uh, expediency for it. Um... One more. Okay. This has been the toughest unboxing on the channel so far. I'll tell you that. But this is a really nice bag. I'm super excited about the bag just itself. Oh, there's lots of like pockets. There's a top pocket on here, and then there's a side pocket for quick access stuff. And then the zippers were taped together. I feel like this is where I'm going to need the knife. I'm so close. Oh, no. Okay, got it. Oh my goodness, guys. There are, this is a great bag. Look, there's so many compartments in here. Look at that. So this is zippered in. There's other zipper compartments on the top too. And then there's a little side zipper compartment here. I don't know what you'd put in there. And then this opens up. Look at that. So much room for stuff in here. Oh my goodness, There's this thing is full of stuff. Should we start with the shoes? 
There's a pair of shoes in here. Let's start with that. They put in a pair of Craft Ultra Trail. All right. Well, look at these things. Hmm. I like these colors. These are nice. I love this color on the inside. What is this color? Orange. Brown. It's made out of the UD foam. A very familiar silhouette. And then look at these chunky lugs on the bottom. Look at this one. It's got a nice toe cap up front. Hmm. Nice. All right. Alexis, formerly Am, says it's burnt orange. Dr. Josh is in here, says it's orange brown. Uh, the colorway name is Botanic slash Pure. So I guess both of you guys are wrong. <laughs> Calvin says uh, the midsole is like the Hyperion Tempo and the upper is like the Endorphin Rift. I'm not familiar with the Endorphin Rift. But I am familiar with the Hyperion Tempo. It's like that. I was just thinking about the Hyperion Tempo today. Um, yeah, I do. I'm debating whether or not I need to review the regular Hyperion that came out. I'm not sure. All right. Let's see what else. Ooh. Let's see what else we got in here. Oh, look at this color hat. I like this. Is this, I think this is a different color orange, but this is a nice color orange. I love this hat. Oh, there's another pair of shoes. There's another pair of shoes in here. Oh boy. We have a pair of Nordlight Ultras. I think I have a pair of the Nordlight Ultra. It's another another color of it. This is I, I don't normally love color fade, but this is working for me. This is working nice. This is the CR foam. Nice. Right. Oh boy. Guys, I, I I don't know if we're gonna have time to go through all this stuff. There's just so much stuff in here. Oh boy. Alright, let's try to get through it all though. First, we have the Pro Hypervent Jacket. Very lightweight. This is a, sh a shell that you could definitely roll up and put into a pack. It says packable on here, too. It's got a little bit of a pulley thing on the back, a cinchy thing on the back, so you can make sure it gets tight around the neck if the weather is miserable. There's a shoulder zipper up here to vent out some heat. Interesting. All right. I'm going to have to keep moving. I'm going to have to move quickly through all this stuff because there's a lot in here. That one was black. Let's see, this is the Pro Hydro Jacket 2. Ooh, Hydro Jacket. This one has a hood. A little bit thicker than the last jacket that I just showed you guys. Stretchy part on the wrist cuff. Ventilated back here to let extra heat out. And then look at this. I like this stuff. Oh, I think this comes up. So that way, oh, I'm going to have to put this one on real quick. I love craft jackets. I love craft apparel especially for colder weather. Is it going to be cold in the Alps? I mean, like, I'm not going to be up at the mountaintops, I don't think. Although I do think we're going for a run. We're going to hit some sort of summit. So I have to bring a variety of apparel. Is that what this is for? I think that's what this is for. Because it's, like, got holes in it. There we go. It's ventilated. I don't think you're supposed to put it fully over your face, but you probably could. 
if the weather were really bad, you know. Oh, this looks nice. Guys, I'm so excited for colder weather. I am not a summer runner. This is nice. This is a nice, like, kind of, like, mid-layer. I feel like you could probably get through a lot of winter running in this. I mean, maybe not for your easy runs, but, yeah, this jacket's nice. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see what else we got. I think it's going to be cold like at night and stuff. So I'm, I'm planning to bring like four seasons worth of stuff. This is the uh, Leisure FZ hood. It's got a craft logo on the shoulder. Nice thick hood. It's got the craft. What do they call this from craft? The craft dot, I, the craft dots circles. I'm not sure what this is. It's got some stitching along like the back shoulder. It's just a nice zip up hoodie. I like this. Look at this. These are kind of like the hoodie straps, this, the little drawstrings. Oh, look at these nice little details. Let's say you open it up. It says craft on the inside. Surprise. I like that a lot. It's a nice heavy weight. Um, as much as I like my performance materials to be like super, super lightweight for my loungy stuff. I want to feel like I'm wearing a weighted blanket. And this is kind of like pretty close to that. All right, this one's catching my eye. Adam says, I go kicking and screaming into winter. You can take the boy out of LA. But he wants some there, I'm fine. Snowshoe running, screw shoes, cross country skiing. Yeah, I don't like any of them. <laughs> I've never tried any of those activities. <laughs> um, but I love cold weather running. I just prefer the cold weather. I don't know. I'm a winter guy, I guess. This is nice. I like this. It's quarter zip. It's got a chest pocket. I like the color blocking on this one. Really nice. Thumb hole. And uh, it's that kind of fleece where it's got like the um, kind of pattern where it's fleece, but these channels are supposed to let a lot of their body heat out. So it keeps you warm, but lets excess moisture and stuff out. So you don't get too clammy or wet. At least that's the idea. That one's going to be nice. And then like, I think these are just all the same shirt. Let me see if they're all the same shirt. No, they're not all the same shirt, but some of them are. So I don't understand what's the difference on some of these though. They look kind of the same. Let's go through them. They sent a lot of stuff in here. I'm like, guys, I don't know if I can go through all this. Do you guys, do you guys want me to go through? I don't think you guys want me to go through all this. You'll see me wearing it. Um, but man, this is a lot of stuff. All right, I got, I'm going to just pick a couple of things that I think are interesting. Because we already did a big craft unboxing because I ordered a bunch of stuff when I knew I was going to go on this trip, you know? So there's, we already saw a lot of stuff that's similar to this. But let's, I'll do stuff that I'm pretty sure I don't have already. This is the Pro Trail Short Sleeve Tee. Ooh, this material is really nice. Look at that. It's very thin. It's got grippy parts on the shoulders for your pack. Um, the material reminds me a lot of the, um, it's kind of, part of it reminds me of the, the rabbit PR collection, that long sleeve green one that they have, maybe because it's the color. But then like, look at how like see-through this stuff is here. This kind of reminds me of some stuff I've seen from, from John G. The tape seams remind me of some stuff I've seen from Rabbit, uh, Bandit. This is a really nice piece. It's called Hypervent. Or at least that's what it says down here. This is really nice. This is nice. I definitely do not have one of those. <clears throat> this next one, oh, a lot of bright colors. Uh, Advanced Essence Long Sleeve Tea. Ooh, this is nice. Um, I don't know if this is to make it packable, this little thing here. I usually put like a hotel key card in this little kind of like, I call them kidney pockets. They kind of go like right back here. You know, it's got one of those. Um, 
and then no thumb holes, but there's two kinds of material. There's kind of like a mesh material that is pretty much see-through. And then there's more of like a technical tee material for the sleeves and on the butt flap. Is that what we're calling this? See this area on the back here? Down here, it's got the craft logo on the tail. Tail, tail's probably better. Mm. All right, Shu and Mukoi says, for the runners going into the night, they're only taking a rain jacket. Temps don't drop that much at night for a normal year. Yeah, but I'm gonna be a spectator. I'm gonna be colder than everyone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring a winter jacket. Someone was telling me, I guess I could just look it up myself, but someone was telling me that Chamonix is only like 4,000 feet, 3,000 feet, something like that. So like, eh, it'll be chilly, but it's not going to be like um, the hut run hut where we were at 11,000 feet and sleeping there at night. That was cold at night. I thought I was worried that I was going to be cold sleeping. Fortunately, like the huts were very, very warm and dry, but yeah. Eric Vensky says, it looks like I'm going to be dropping a ton of money in the craft website after this. I mean, I spend a lot of money on craft every year um, just because their winter stuff is really so good, you know? Um, all right. Let's see what, let's see what else is in here. Vanessa wants to know if there's any singlets. I don't think there's any singlets in here. Let's check out these though. These are these are catching my eye. This is the brightest pair of pants I've ever seen. This is part of the everyday training wardrobe, the Advance Essence 2-in-1 stretch shorts. You guys know I've been loving the 2-in-1s this summer. Look at this color. This is so bright. Oh my goodness, it's so bright. Um, it looks like it has a big back pocket back here. Oh, it's huge back here. I think you could fit a phone in there. And then you got side pockets. And then you've got the two-in-one, where the two-in-one has the phone pocket in here, which I really like. This will be nice. Whew. You will not miss me on the mountain in this. It's even got some reflective parts, too. I wonder, I, bet, <laughs> I wonder if this, does this glow in the dark, do you think? I wonder if this glows in the dark. <clears throat> Yeah, Seatown, uh, Shu and Cody says, um, at least you won't get lost in the mountains. Well, I will probably still get lost. I'll just be easily findable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't think I've seen this one before. Oh, lots of... They're using lots of different materials in all their shirts. This is also part of the uh, everyday training wardrobe, advanced essence short sleeve. So it's like that orange long sleeve, but a short sleeve version, two different materials. There's a little bit of mesh, not as much mesh on this one, on the back and then on the sides and then technical material up front, craft logo up front. Nice. Got some more shorts in here. <laughs> Eric says, Kavosi homing beacon in neon. There we go. Be like, how will I find you in UTMB? Oh, you'll know. You'll just know. <laughs> um, Travis Fournier has a really good question. Anyone specific you're looking to interview at UTMB? Um, I don't really have any specific like interview kind of uh goals there i'm not sure uh, since i am going with craft i'm not sure if they'll be setting up some time for me to interview some craft athletes um but it just seems like uh utmb has become a place where like everyone's just going um i mean like molly seidel was there last year with koros um so like they're sending non trail runners as well i mean they're sending me this year i'm a I'm a little bit of a trail runner, but like, I'm not a, a trail runner like that. I'm not competing in this. I don't have aspirations to compete in this. It's going to be just way too far outside my comfort zone, but I'm super interested in seeing like the whole spectacle of it all. 
So like, that's my main goal is to kind of like capture both the beauty of the mountains and then just like the, I'm not sure if I'm going to try to capture it as like, like the crush of people that are in this town or just mainly the community of it. So like, I'm just trying to ca convey what it's like to be there in town, to watch the race, to run some of the, cause we will do some running while we're out there. Um, so like to kind of convey that stuff. So that's really what I'm more interested in. What's the food going to be like, you know, um, what are the other people that are there to spectate or to cheer on their friends going to be like, you know, so that's kind of the environment. Um, I do know a lot of people that are, a lot of my friends are going, my like colleagues kind of that are going with a variety of different brands. I'm not sure how busy my schedule is going to be. And to be honest, I don't know like how far apart things are that like if we're like going to see each other every day or never see each other at all. Like for example, in like Eugene for world championships last year, um, like I was there with ASICS, but like Tommy was there with on and I didn't see like a single on person like the entire time, you know, I said, saw Tommy at some ASICS events. Um, but like, I didn't see like, I know on was there. I didn't see them. I know Puma was there. I saw their house, but I didn't like, see them because everything was can still be kind of spread out i don't think that um utmb is quite the same but it also is a very long race so things are do get kind of spread you know so i'm not really sure and um that uncertainty i hope will translate into delight and surprise to use to borrow a phrase for what i'm capturing so that's my goal over there <clears throat> Mm, all right let's see this pants pro trail two and one so if you like the uh, the yellow two and ones and now we got a pro version <clears throat> this one's very long a very long two and one it's almost kind of reminds me of gravel bike shorts craft has a very large selection of like mountain biking pants and gravel biking pants that kind of just look they kind of look like yoga pants to me and i'm also like i want that to come to the running space so maybe this is the, the beginning of the crossover but look at the pockets on this thing got two back stash pockets here side stash pocket a zipper pocket on this side and then look at all these they're kind of like they remind me of molly attachments but they're just elastic bands i don't know if you're supposed to put um gels in there or what but man, there's a lot of pockets all over this thing. And then there's the two-in-one, which doesn't seem to have pockets on the two-in-one. Oh yeah, there is, here we go. We even got a phone pocket over here. So I love the color. The length is pretty cool. I like, these are great shorts. Joe Carter says, those will embrace your current long short arc. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think they will. C Town Fan says, might it get too hot? Might, maybe. I don't think in the mountains it would, you know? That's the thing. So, <clears throat> not in the mountains. But, you know, if you were in Texas, like flowers, that would definitely be too hot. Uh, <clears throat> OK Runner says, hey, GoFuzzy, if I start a YouTube channel, should I share with my personal socials or start new and start from scratch? Um, I just used my personal and that became a professional one. You know what I mean? And so like it went from like me and my friends seeing pictures of me and my family and stuff to then all of a sudden just running. And I think that was kind of weird for people for a while. So like it, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to that. Um, if you still want to maintain a personal account where you're sharing stuff, maybe privately or like with a smaller group of people, um, I might start a different one, but like, you know, it, I don't think there's a right or wrong. I think it only if you're, there are privacy concerns, then I would do that, you know? So that's a good question though. Uh, C-Town fan says marathon is still your main distance, right? Yep. That's still my favorite. I mean, I, I love the half marathon. I just don't get the chance to run it as much. Um, marathons have kind of captured my attention for the past several years. So. Yeah.
All right. Alf Dickinson. My wife is like, what the hell is that bloke talking about now? Pockets? Pockets are so important. I don't think we talk enough about pockets. Especially, I think in women's apparel, there's definitely not enough pockets. Although the irony is, for women's full-length tights, there's always better pockets than on men's full-length tights. But like in terms of shorts, half tights, I always feel like the women definitely get you know, the short shrift when it comes to pockets. All right. Let's see what we got here. These are pants. Cause see, I think it is going to be chilly. They know, they know what they're doing. Pro hydro cargo pants. Nice. I think I have these also in blue. I think, I think these are the ones that I bought in blue. So now I have them in two colors, but I'm, you know, I was, uh, I was in college during like the cargo pant craze. So I am one of those dads that is like waiting with bated breath for cargo pockets to come back. I love cargo pockets. Um, but I'm really excited about these because now I have <laughs> two colors and they're great pants. All right, we got a lot of stuff here. Vanessa Martinez says, pockets, yes. There's never enough pockets in women's clothing. I need somewhere to stash my tater tots. <laughs> That's really funny. And Sue Ann says, definitely not enough pockets in women's clothing in general. I think that the strangest is like the fake pockets that they'll make for some women, like women's like dress pants. Sometimes that happens in jeans, although not that much anymore. I feel like sometimes there, it looks like there's pockets, but it just looks like there's a pocket. And I guess for the silhouette to keep it, you know, slender or whatever, they don't put the pocket in there because they don't want you putting stuff in there. You want to keep the clean lines. So it looks like there's a pocket, but it's just like a, a sewed shut seam and then no pocket to carry anything in there. It's weird. Women's clothing is weird sometimes. All right. These pants. Another pair of pro... Trail two and one. Oh, same shorts, different colors. Oh, look at this. This is nice. This kind of makes it look like a face, though. It's like a face with eyebrows in the back. It's kind of like an elephant. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why this is making me so happy, but I like this. But I, I, I think I like the. I, I don't know. I'm not sure about this color for the two-in-one part, but I do like the color work on this. Good shorts. Calvin says baggy cargos are in style, though. Now I feel like you guys are trolling me again. Like the time you guys tried to tell me that the embargo had lifted for the Primex Strong 2. I think you guys are tricking me. Gino DG says that color is ochre. Let me bring this back. This is ochre. You know what colors? I have no idea. Like visually, my mind draws a literal visual blank when these two colors are named. Ochre and ombre. I just don't know. I have no idea. I mean, I'm trying to remember that kind of like peachy pink coral maybe is ochre. I'll try to remember that, but I probably won't. Because most of the time when I hear ochre and ombre, I'm just like... I don't know. Um, I got in a very long conversation with Ashley Mateo one time about how much she loves the color ombre on things. And I was just like, mm -hmm. oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> I just, I couldn't, I hadn't, I didn't, I didn't, she was so excited about ombre. I just didn't know how to convey that. I don't know what ombre is. <laughs> All right, we got some more shorts here. Advance Essence five inch stretch shorts. Nice. This short, let's see, does it have a liner? Yes, it does have a liner. It's got a decent sized pocket in the back. Uh, I think that's it, just the one pocket. Is there a key pocket? Yeah, there's a little key pocket. Craft key pockets go sideways. Like normal key pockets go down. Craft ones go sit side, kind of like side saddle 
a little bit. It, work, it works fine. And I feel like with the size of keys these days, like car keys these days, they're just getting bigger and bigger. Although I guess they're still smaller than when they used to have like the metal piece that stuck out of the plastic. But I don't know, they're just getting bulkier and bulkier. I do think that maybe the sideways way is the better way. I feel like the only thing that they put in here that wasn't craft branded was uh, bandages. They put in bandages, which I already made a mental note to myself that I need to start packaging or packing bandages whenever I travel somewhere just because I don't always need them. But when you do, you're like, oh, man, I'm bleeding on things. What do I do here? I wish I had a bandage that would solve things. Like I, I cut my finger when I was in Colorado Springs. And I was kind of bleeding all over the place. And I was like, I just need a bandage. It also makes me nervous because it's like, this is the first trip I've ever been on where the brand is like, you're going to get injured. We'll provide the bandages for you. <laughs> so I don't know if I should be worried. All right. Let's do like two more because there's like a lot of other t-shirts and things in here. Um... But we'll just do two more because these are catching my eye. Oh, this material is really nice. What is this called? Pro Hypervent Long Sleeve Wind Top. This is really nice. So it's like the same kind of shirt as the first one, the short sleeve one, but the materials are very different. This stuff is very stretchy. And almost like sheer on the back. Whoa, it's slippery. And then on the front, it's kind of got like, uh, it's oh, is it a dual layer mesh? It's almost like a ripstop type of material here. Um, and I'm guessing that's what keeps the wind out. But this windy material is on just the front. And then you've got like almost like a thin rain layer jacket on the back. Interesting. This is a pretty cool piece. I've never seen anything like this before. This is nice. And then on the tail, you've got the craft logo on the arms. Is this on the arms? No, this is on the side. It's got pro, a little pro running tag. Interesting. And then a little bit of elastic on the cuff, but no thumb hole. This is nice. I like this. All right, this is the last one I'll do today. Yeah, but Vanessa Martega, you see, it's like, is this a magic duffel? It's a bag that keeps on giving. The bag was only like half full. That's the thing. The tough part is going to be trying to keep it under weight so I can actually ship it or bring it as like, I'm not going to bring it as carry on, but you know, I don't want to have to pay extra for a heavy bag. Um, nor do I want to make people carry a heavy bag, you know? All right, last thing Pro Hypervent pants. Guys, you guys know I love the craft pants. These are nice. Zipper pockets on each side. Nice elastic band. So it's got that same pro running tag, but it's in black on this one. And then um, it's vented behind the knee. I don't know if you could see the venting part. It's like mesh back here. See that? And then it tapers with vent on the, like mesh on the front and back. And then it's got a, a black glossy craft logo right below the knee too. So um, I really, it's kind of like, I mean, it's like a lot of the running pants that I like. A little bit baggy and roomy through the thighs. Some pockets is also a nice kind of like touch if they can add it. And then um, almost like tights towards the bottom. So my favorite kind of cut. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I thought maybe for a second that there's maybe a liner in here, which I thought would have been unusual, but no. And the interesting thing is, like, I was just talking about how these are like half half pants, half tights. For craft, that's regular fit. <laughs> so very cool. I'm excited. This is all stuff that I'll add to the large amount of craft clothes that I've already bought before. 
Um, Seek down fan wants to know if it's zippered at the end. No, it's not. It's kind of, um, some, it's almost kind of like unfinished, just like the material just kind of ends. You know, have you seen that kind of stuff before? So that's why it makes me think that it's going to be a little bit of a tighter fit down towards the bottom. Um, uh, maybe tapered at the bottom is kind of what it looks like so far. So that's it. I got, there's some other shirts in there. I think they're the similar or the same as to some of the other shirts I've showed you before. Um, from that last batch of craft stuff that I bought. So that's it. That's a lot. I mean, that took me 45 minutes, like 40 minutes to get through. <laughs> oh boy. Mm, all right. Calvin says, no socks? What socks will you wear then? Um, yeah, there's no socks in here. I don't know if Kraft makes socks. Does Kraft make socks? I don't know if they do. Um, but for socks, I'll probably wear um, crew length socks. Cause I'll be, well, I don't know. I'll bring some low cut, no show socks. Um, <clears throat> that's probably what I'll wear in Budapest. I feel like it's going to be hot there. And then in the Alps, I'm assuming it's going to be a lot like being in Boulder in the summer where it'll be hot during the day, chilly in the mornings and evenings. Socks wise, I'll probably just wear crew length socks the whole time. Maybe some bandit socks. Um, Maybe some say sky socks. I do like the say sky say size socks a lot. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Calvin says they do have socks, but they're pricey at twenty four dollars a pair. Oh, I'll probably definitely be bringing my darn tough socks, like my kind of like higher above over the calf socks in case I need that for some reason. I don't think I will. Maybe, uh, I don't know if I'll bring those, but I don't know. <clears throat> Adam Fierce says, for the world champs, any Americans winning medals at 1500 or beyond? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was looking at a lot of people have been putting out their predictions. Um, Sidious Mag has been putting out their predictions. Um, world Track and Field News have put out some of their predictions. Some of their predictions I felt like, oh, these are bold. I'm not sure I agreed with those, but most of their controversial stuff was like about um, for the sprints. Um, I don't know. I'm hoping for a good showing, but I feel like a lot of the American medals will be in the uh, shorter distance events, 400 and shorter, or maybe below 400. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. It feels like this is a year where there's a lot of clear favorites for first place in a lot of the events. And then for the other events, it's kind of like, I don't know any of these people. I, I, Cause I'm not like a super, super track fan. You know, I follow a, a little bit. I do watch, I usually watch it like recorded. Like I have YouTube TV and I just have it set to record diamond league and like anything from USATF. So like every once in a while, it'll just, I don't know when the meets are, but it'll just show up like, hey, we recorded this for you. And I'll be like, oh, cool. Diamond League Lusanne. Let's watch, you know? So like I watch a little bit, but um, usually in the background while I'm doing other stuff, because I don't really sit down to watch anything unless it's movie night with the fam. But above, above 1500, I don't know. I feel like um, I like Inga Britson in the 1500. Um, and then for the women's, um, I don't know who's going to beat faith right now. So unless, I don't know. The, the tricky thing is, is that, um, for this year is that it's very close to Paris. So I feel like a lot of people are kind of like, like, yeah, it's a world championships. You know what I mean? For on, on some level, uh, I'm super excited about it. I'm very excited to go, but I'm like from the pros, you know, there was a lot of talk. Uh, I think part, a lot of it was like a thing, Mo, like Sydney McLaughlin, Lebroni, um, talking about, well, I'm not sure I'm going to do it. A couple of other athletes have done the same thing where they've either considered it publicly or have withdrawn saying that they're like, you know, I've got some minor things I want to take care of. I'm going to let those fully heal. I'll end my season now. And then we'll, eyes forward to Paris, you know? So I feel like that's kind of putting like a little bit of a cloud on stuff. Like, I don't know who's doing what, but, um, it'll be interesting. 
it, it's going to be fun to watch. I'm really, I'm really excited for it. Adam says, Stefan's going for the triple again. I mean, that, that's so wild. I mean, it's like, it's like, oh, I don't know who's going to beat Faith Kibiegon. And then like, Stefan sounds like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like maybe, I mean, she's just so fast too. All right, Nicholas Greenfield with a question of the day, and I think we'll probably end it here for for the for the the week after this long unboxing. I kind of need a break. I also have a lot. Of, I'm sitting covered in trash. I have to pick. I have to clean up. All right, Nicholas Greenfield wants to know: Can anyone recommend a marathon racer similar to the Adidas Adios Pro Three? Love the ride and how it's wide foot friendly, but the upper is causing me a lot of issues. I would look at the Endorphin Elite not a cheap option and for me the upper on that shoe is inferior to the upper on the endorphin elite but i didn't have any problems with the audios pro 3 so maybe like you know where one didn't work for me the other one will and maybe that's going to be it i would look at that one um i think that the alpha fly is another one to look at because i feel like on paper there's a lot of similarities and then I think maybe like the third one I would look for after that would be maybe Meta Speed, Speed Sky Plus. Those are my, like Meta Speed Sky Plus and Audios Pro 3 are like my two favorites. Maybe Endorphin Elite is more of a favorite. I haven't really, yeah, I'm not sure. I like all, I like a lot of those. Uh, but maybe Meta Speed Sky, because it also it has like big landing pad in the front, um, lots of cushion, lots of carbon. Um, and then everything is very much lightweight. So like the the that's kind of where I feel like there's a lot of similarities too. So, you know, that's another one I'll look at. Um, Frank says they haven't come out with the Adios Pro Strong yet. Uh, I don't think I've seen one. But no, so I don't I don't think so. Um, I thought I is that is there a Takumi Sen Strong? I thought I saw some images for one, but then I'm not seeing it. You know what I mean? So I don't know if that was a leak or if that's not happening. I don't know. Um, I probably won't get the if there's a Takumi Sen strong. I probably won't get it. I like the Takumi Sen as it is, especially for a fa shorter, faster distance shoe. I don't know that I want strong because I feel like strong is comfort for this, but you're exchanging comfort for lightweightness. But if the upper on the regular version doesn't work, the strong is a good option. Hmm, interesting. But I haven't I haven't seen an Adios Pro strong. I wonder why. I don't know. All right. Uh, that's going to be it. For, yeah. Adam says, oops, Adidas rep is going to scold you. <laughs> um, Calvin says, the, the strong is lighter than the regular. Is it? Oh, all right. I, I don't feel that. But I'll take your word for it. All right. Um, that's going to be it for today, guys. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, two more live streams before I'm kind of like gone for a week and a half. So we'll have ones on Monday and Tuesday. Um, I've got a couple of other things that I bought specifically for this, uh, UTMB trip that we'll take a look at unbox next week. Should be a lot of fun. Um, but, uh, in, in the meantime, have fun on your long runs out there and be safe out there, everybody. Thanks.